Hey everybody, Aaron here from the Hall Age Show, and uh, we are at uh, Panels, a uh, comic book coffee shop here in Oceanside, and um, we got a few artists here that are doing a meet and greet. Uh, we got uh, first up, it's uh, Terry Mayo. How are you doing, Terry? I'm good. How are you doing? <laughs> um, Would you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, let's see. Well, native of Texas, but been in San Diego for the last uh, 20 some odd years. Uh, started off doing screenplays up in Hollywood, trying to get rich and famous, but didn't quite achieve that. So, so started doing comic books about uh, five years ago, web comics. Uh, then got my first one published by Alterna about half a year ago, and then the ball's been rolling since then. Well, what's the comic book called? Comic book is called The Wicked Righteous. Um, number two came out uh, Wednesday, Wednesday the 18th of uh, October. Awesome, congratulations. Thank you, appreciate it. Uh, what's, uh, what's the premise behind this, uh, The Wicked Righteous? The premise, well, luckily you say that. <laughs> uh, we have it tagged as Stranger Things meets Mad Max. It's four teenage brothers rescue a young girl from a brutal gang of psychopaths and spark a disastrous chain of events. It takes place in uh, San Diego, California. Uh, long story short, something has happened in the world and the vast majority of adults have, have died. So that leaves the children, the, the righteous. And then it reminds me of a, like a Twilight Zone episode. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey. Yeah. Yeah. I think I know which one you're talking about. <laughs> but basically, like that, but with a little bit more blood. <laughs> and um, correct me if I'm wrong. You were mentioning that these are stories that you told your kids on on car rides. Yeah. I don't know if that what kind of dad that makes me, but <laughs> but but yeah. I like I said, I'm originally from Texas. So whenever we go back driving through Texas, driving through Yuma, driving through Arizona, New Mexico. I'm always telling them stories because it's cheaper than buying books on tape. So it starts off, all of my stories start off with once upon a time there were four brothers. So Wicked Righteous starts off once upon a time there was four brothers and it takes place in San Diego. All my kids have biblical names. Uh, the four characters in here have biblical names. So just kind of a what if, my Marvel what if version of, uh, of my kid's life. <laughs> Now, now, this is a six-part series, correct? Right, correct, yes. And uh, I guess you're going to be working on a, on a second six-part? I, I am. Uh, nothing official has been released yet, but I have been working on issue uh, 7 through 12, and we'll see what, what happens, yeah. Well, I mean, cause the reason I ask is because uh, the first six has four kids, and you have six kids, right? I do. So There's two more. <laughs> there, there, yeah, there's two more characters that need to be filled. <laughs> um, so... I'm always curious when I talk to other creatives and, and people who create their own comic books. Um, first of all, like, how were you when you were a kid? What, what, what was Terry like at 11? <laughs> Ooh, I guess you'd have to ask one of my seven sisters, but I, I was a hellion. I uh, talked too much, didn't listen enough. <laughs> but uh, I, you know, I, and I have another book coming out called Disposable Legends, and it's, it's kind of different uh, clones of, uh, of famous people put on TV to fight for enjoyment that kind of thing and it kind of always reminds me of me in my bedroom playing with my G.I. Joes my Star Wars my He-Man and just kind of putting them in a big battle royale so that was me an overactive imagination just creating my own worlds and that's kind of stayed with me apparently <laughs> so how did you find your, your way into comic books like do you remember the first comic book that you read I do actually yeah the first comic book I read was a Marvel What If and I, I know it came out in the 70s but I'm not sure which one it was I think it was uh, What If uh, Wolverine had killed the Hulk vice versa maybe but it was I, I remember being familiar with the Marvel Universe through like older my sister's older boyfriends and whatnot but I never really had jumped into it so seeing this What If and seeing an actual character that I knew like being killed i was like oh my god this is this is amazing you can do anything in comics so i just so yeah and then it picked up from there i always enjoyed spider-man always enjoyed x-men of make mine marvel that kind of thing okay. so what other marvel characters did you like growing up um gosh i i like i said i've always been a big x-men fan i 
Gambit was always just that that ladies man that, that I never could be <laughs> that kind of thing in Spider-Man um, I've always rooted for the villain for some reason so I'm big into Doctor Doom Venom Carnage it, pre pretty much any Spider-Man villain I'm, I'm all over how do you think the Marvel movies have fared so far are you a big fan of them I am I'm a big fan of them I've been following them um, I'm looking forward to Ragnarok, looking forward to um, Black Panther. The trailer for Black Panther looks amazing. I, you know, there, there hasn't been a Marvel movie that I've seen in the last couple years that I, that I haven't been a fan of. Um, DC movies, not so much, but, <laughs> but the Marvel are great. So you mentioned the Gambit earlier. Do you think that Gambit movie will ever be made? Yeah, I, I, again, I'm torn about how Channing Tatum is going to pull that off. and. I don't know. I, he's not convincing me, but <laughs> I, I, he doesn't convince me. But hey, I'm, I'll be a fan of anything that they put out. I, I guess you weren't a fan of Jupiter Rising. <laughs> not so much. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you find your way into actually creating your first comic book? Um, well, like I said, I, I, I did screenplays for a little bit, sold some, but they always sat on a shelf. They never got turned into anything. So you go back to your family and you're like, yeah, I, I sold some screenplays and then nothing ever gets produced. And they're like, okay, Terry, sure. <laughs> sure. You're writing these screenplays. Um, so I, like I said, I, I've always been a comic book nerd. When my kids got old enough to start reading comic books, I was like, oh, this would be amazing. I could make something with them, kind of put it out. And there's Matt. <laughs> <laughs> so um it was kind of more of a collaborative effort with me and my kids they pushed me to do it when i didn't think that it would be something i could do but yeah so this is i i give all the crate the praise to, to my boys for pushing me um we talked earlier before the interview and you said that you work full-time as a nurse mm -hmm. yeah. um and i had asked you how do you find the time between working full-time as a nurse uh raising six kids and uh, creating comic books. Well, it's 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 a little it's rough. My my two older ones, my two older boys, are out of the house right now. So I have a 23 year old. He's in the military in Guam, so he's kind of raising himself now. My my second old just went to college. He went to UC uh, Santa Cruz, so he's been out of the house for a month now, which is sad but <laughs> so I'm not sure I'm dealing with that and the other ones range from three years old to 15 years old so it's 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 a lot of sacrifice missing things or taking the laptop to things it's a, it's a lot of late nights getting three hours of sleep sometimes it's you know it's it's there's a lot of sacrifice that goes into doing something that you love and you know and you told me an interesting story about I guess one of your sons uh, is in Guam mm -hmm. and uh, he had happened to see somebody else reading one of your comic books yeah. <laughs> you want to tell us a little bit about that story yeah sure uh, um, it's amazing the reach that, that the book has I, I didn't realize how wide it was but um, one of the comic shops in Japan carries the book and apparently he saw the person reading it in a co in a coffee shop took a picture sent it to me so it was just it was it was surreal it was a surreal moment what other countries is your comic book in um, I know it's in the UK Ireland Japan Africa uh, the Netherlands um, Canada and everywhere in America except for Alaska for some reason it's not in Al I don't know why I don't know why it's not in Alaska but it's not there um, but yeah, and and every every month I'm learning of some new place that it's that that it's reaching. I, yeah, it's just it's wild. Um, I, I always run into a bunch of uh, independent creators, and they're, they're trying to make it into, you know, sending up meetings with other publishers and trying to pitch their their ideas. Do you have any advice for for some of them that are trying to, I guess, hook up with some of the other publishers? Mm. Uh, just have a thick skin because you're going to hear no a lot and my personal thing that I do I have this huge bookshelf and all my rejection letters which a lot of companies don't send rejection letters anymore if you hear anything that's that's a that's a plus but um, 
whether it's yes or no. But the, the no's, I've gotten a couple letters, like from uh, 2000 AD and some of those other companies. I save them, I put them in a book, uh, a random book on my shelf, and I just save it. If it's an email, I print it out, I save it, put it on the bookshelf, just so that one day I can be reading through this book and find this letter. And it just kind of, it motivates me, kind of like the teacher in high school that says you're never going to amount to anything, and how you want to like prove them wrong. So I want to prove these letters wrong, that I that I do have what it takes. So uh, thick skin, don't take no for an answer. Just keep pushing and be persistent. And how have your kids reacted to your comic books? <laughs> um, they're, I know they're proud of me. <laughs> they're, just like I was when I was 11, they make theirs Marvel. They have their favorite characters. And, and you know, at, at some point, they're going to appreciate my characters. <laughs> right now is not, right, right, right not one of them. I think it... It's hard for them to see me as being someone who has a book out on shelves, who who can go into a comic shop and see something I've made, because I'm still just dad to them. I'm just I'm just this goofus who walks out of his room in his underwear. So, yeah. So it, it hasn't hit them as much as it has hit me. Um, seeing as how you come from a screenwriting background, um, if your comic book was made into a movie, like who would want who would you want to play some of the the characters in your book? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of the kid from Stranger Things and It. Uh, I forget his name. He had the glasses. He's the main kid in Stranger Things. I guess I should know his name. But uh, he's an awesome actor right now. And the Wicked Righteous is is four teenage boys. Uh, and I, he's so talented, I think he would be able to pull off uh, one of the main characters in it. Um, I really don't write my characters with an actor in mind. Usually it's somebody in my life, like a co-worker or an ex whoever with somebody in mind, and I just kind of build them around that. But yeah, the Stranger Things kid, thats I can totally see him. Speaking of Stranger Things, they're going to be starting their new season soon. Yeah, yeah I'm excited about that. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, so going forward, are there any other projects that you can tell us about? Yeah, yeah, I've got... Um, Short story coming out in the If Anthology in November. Um, this gets called Helpless. It's a little serial killerish eight-page story. Um, another sh two short stories coming out the following year. Um, I have a, another six-part limited series coming out through T-Pub um, called Disposable Legends. Uh, it's supposed to be coming around January, February-ish. Um, sent the covers off to Diamond and we're waiting to hear back on scheduling for that. Uh, and then another limited series that I'm going to start pitching probably at the beginning of the next year. <laughs> um, yeah, and that's what I have so far and anything else is just not ready to announce, I guess. Uh, I, I guess when you're ready to announce, uh, why don't you reach out to us and we'll, we'll get it on the podcast. Oh, definitely, man. Anytime. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, where can people find you online? Um, all of my stuff, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, is all at MayoTL. So just type in M-A-Y-O-T-L or Terry Mayo and I should pop up. Well, thank you for your time, Terry. Thank you. It was great. It was great meeting you. Yeah, great meeting you. All right. <laughs> See you later.